Makers, and welcome back to another studio vlog. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. I'm Joanna, and this is Stitching the High Notes, where each week I share what I'm currently making, whether it be knitting, sewing, crochet, whatever creative rabbit hole I may be going down at the moment, as well as a look behind the scenes of my creative small business, where I make project bags and curate tools for makers like you. My hope each week is to encourage you to nourish your own creativity, to live slowly and with intention, and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you? I hope that you are well, that you've had a great week. I am well. It is Sunday afternoon, actually. I'm getting a little bit of a later start today. I will confess I'm one of the many Bridgerton binge zombies out there. <laughs> I stayed up way past my bedtime the other night and I'm still recovering, but was happy to have something to get away after the work week. And I'm looking forward to this week to getting away for real and actually going on vacation for real vacation, y'all. So I am very much looking forward to that. And I have some stuff to share with you before I have to get to packing and meal planning and all of that but more about that later first up i have like i mentioned some knitting i have some finished socks to share with you today a little bit of progress on my granny stripe blanket which i'm picking up and some updates on my plants so grab a beverage i have my lovely tea that i just brewed some knitting or stitching and let's catch up As mentioned, I have a finished pair of socks. These are my wildflowers and honeycomb socks, a pattern by This Handmade Life. And I used beautiful yarn by Sweet Sparrow Yarns in the colorway Garden Rose on the Magpie base, which I'll tell you about here in a minute. It has a little bit of Stellina. Hopefully you can see that in there. And these have been an absolute joy to make the past few weeks. I uh, decided I wanted to ring in spring, which is now officially here with a nice quick project um, and something with a few techniques that I haven't done before, not, not techniques, I should say, pattern types in a sock that I haven't done before namely this gorgeous heel which is the honeycomb of the honeycomb wildflowers and honeycombs it's a slip stitch heel flap with a gusset so it's a traditional cuff down pattern and it just turned out so beautifully they fit really well too i'll show show you a little video here of how they fit on my feet <laughs> they have a little bit of positive ease so they're perfect for i could just envision me wearing these you know outside on a picnic blanket reading that's what i'm aiming to do with these lovelies um and what else to say a lot of it has been said throughout the course of the last few vlogs but in case you are new here we'll give you a rundown of my kind of thoughts on the pattern i did a german twisted cast on which is what was recommended it allows it a little bit of um stretch which is really lovely i did a three by two twisted rib so knit two knit three rather through the back loop and then purl one which is also what's recommended in the pattern there are some alternate cuff and heels um in the pattern as well if these don't float your boat <laughs> and then i used a 2.5 millimeter needle uh, usually i use a 2.25 millimeter needle but it was suggested to use a 2.5 which i went with um I didn't take gauge, I don't usually for socks because I've made so many in the past, but I went larger because of the patterning of the sock and the knit togethers and all of that, um, that a large needle would be needed in order to have the fit. And I've learned from experience <laughs> that if there's patterning like this on a sock, it's better to go with a larger size needle to ensure that they fit because I have not done that in the past. 
Um, and then I did a heel flap and gusset, as I kind of mentioned before, which is not my usual go-to, but I enjoyed kind of switching it up. Um, and the heel flap was with that slip stitch pattern and kind of a traditional gusset into the foot of the sock. I did these on magic loop, I should say. And then the toe decreases are kind of the usual knit two together on one side, slip slip knit on the other, and then a Kitchener toe, which is not always the cleanest on my socks because I tend to always do toe up socks. That's my kind of go-to. But lovely to make, highly, highly recommend this pattern. And I'm, it's been wonderful to hear that so many of you are making it actually, and we're inspired to do so, which gives me so much joy. Please do share and tag me on Instagram if you do, or send me a picture, love it. And more about this yarn as promised, this is what I have left over. I have 38 grams, I just weighed it this morning. And this is on the Magpie base, which is a 75% superwash merino, 20% uh, nylon, and 5% stellina, a gold stellina. 438 yards, 100 grams in the original skein. And here's the card. This is from a 2016 purchase. And I did, I don't think she has these, Julie, the yarn dyer, doesn't have this in stock per se, but it looks like she does still offer a, at some points this colorway, or at least it's recorded as a colorway and a base on her website, which is linked down below, as well as everywhere that you can find me on social media and elsewhere. So 38 grams is what's left. I mentioned last week that I'd like to make another pair of socks using a contrasting uh, heel toe and cuff color. So it'd be a different color for the cuff and the heel, uh, heel flap, and then the toe decreases. Usually those sets have like a 50 gram skein uh, for socks. Granted, they wouldn't be shorty socks. It would be provided for like a normal kind of length of leg and I could do it so that I just did an even shorter sock because these are kind of not really shorty socks I probably would have done like one more repeat to get like a traditional length of a leg um but it's just kind of too close and I have vacation brain <laughs> and I actually usually while I have love the thrill of yarn chicken I'm just not into it <laughs> this time around so I'm not gonna cast on a pair, at least not at this time with what I have left over, um, and just kind of save this for now. And instead, you know, just have a palette cleanser week. And I've picked up again my Granny Stripe blanket, which is still fitting for now in one of my older bags. This is one of the first bags I made for the shop. And I will have links to the tutorials and methods that I am following down in the description box. Um, no pattern necessarily. And I haven't shown this in a little while. So I've done, I wanna say four stripes or something since I showed this last. I don't think I should show this orange color. I'm using just scrap yarn and primarily kind of lighter pastel colors for the most part is what I'm sticking with. Oh, it's so pretty, it's so pretty. Um, it's quite long, it is like this. <laughs> it's meant to, I've done, um, I've chained enough on there to cast on, enough to lay flat on like a topper for a queen size bed. And as I said, I'm using scrap uh, yarn from past projects or mini skeins that I've received over the years or just little bits here and there. Right now I'm working through a bag of yarn enabler yarns that I did as a sock swap um, many years ago. And I've done six of the original 10 skeins. And this is what I have left. I'll show you just a beautiful bouquet of mini skeins, which I know brings me joy. So I know brings you guys joy too. Oh, so pretty. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And I just wound up 
a skein this morning while I was doing the Patreon Zoom stitch and chat that we have each week uh, because I finished up the orange stripe and so I decided to kind of switch it up, get some more colors in there and um, did this self striping mini skein. I love this turquoise color right here. What's going on? I'm using a size D crochet hook and I'm using the magic knot ball method to join the yarn which I'm I love doing for blankets um, it's just especially scrappy blankets like this so you can see this is the color that it started with and then you can kind of see here you go right here you can see where the magic knot and it just goes in there <laughs> and then it just will keep going. So this is what I'm going to be taking with me on vacation as my kind of primary, uh, my primary project, if you will. I almost said knitting, but it is crochet project. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a lot of reading for the most part and chilling out a little bit of brainstorming and dreaming it's a bit of a stitching the high notes business retreat as well as a vacation just getting away to a new environment so I kind of went back and forth I thought about casting something new on and then I was like you know I just I need something easy peasy already on the go and so I can come back with full creative energy this is all about like kind of refilling my cup of creative energy and flow and rest and then I can pour myself into a new project I'll have more clarity about it what exactly I'd like to make uh, personal making wise not just for the shop so yeah looking forward to it Love a good cup of tea. The only other thing I've been making this past week um, has been plants. <laughs> so I'm happy to report that the little seeds that I planted last week for my windowsill garden that I am starting here have sprouted. They are flourishing. They sprouted maybe, I want to say Wednesday, I started to see the sunflower. I planted some little dwarf sunflowers last week, if you saw. Uh, and then some basil right here. And just in the last day, this is really hopping. Oh, so excited. And I did get uh, some replacement seeds for the other two little terracotta pots that I got. They were kits, but there were no seed packets in there. Um, rosemary and mint were what we were missing what what was i was missing um but i got a little bit more than that so i can have like a full herb garden since these are going so well um i was concerned because the soil is a bit low in this uh, sunflower bucket but as you can see it is not having an issue <laughs> so i'm really really happy um, but I got some other ones and I have like this little guy is a little pot from a couple of years ago. I got it at the grocery store. It had some basil in there that I had for some time. So I'll put another herb in there, maybe some thyme. Um, and I think I have like a couple of other little pots for herbs that I can use and I might get some more. We'll see. Um, I have to leave a little bit of room for you all to stay where you all are each week, but I'm really looking forward to it. My other plants are doing well. This is my money plant. Um, it came in this pot, and I think I'll probably need to repot it soon if I want to have it grow a little bit larger. It's definitely gotten like an offshoot right here. Uh, and I need to get some fertilizer for this one as well as for my Pelia, which is back here. But this is still going. It's so, it's such a weird Pelia because <laughs> it 
just keeps growing. It doesn't like the bottom leaves eventually come off, but it's just had another couple of sprouts, like three different new sprouts came through. While I'm gone, I am going to put it on the windowsill and put my blinds over it so that it can get some direct sunlight. So it'll be interesting to see how much it grows with a little bit more light than it gets in this little corner here. I might repot that one as well. It definitely needs fertilizer, but I might put it in a smaller pot and I think part of it too although it was like this before I put it into this pot um, and I had given a cutting to my sister as well and it even um, grew very slowly for her too um, but I might put it in another one this one doesn't drain and so I know root rot is the thing I'm experiencing I'm just gonna tell you about all my plants but I have some root rot happening with this guy back here which I can't remember the name of the plant but um uh, part of it kind of came off when I moved it uh, to sew because I have it next to my sewing machine, um, which is such a bummer. But one of the branches is fine, and the one that came off looked okay, so I cut the bottom off and I put it in some water to see if it would propagate because it looked like it had some roots that could still grow out of it. And then the last update <laughs> Uh, is my pothos continues to thrive, good old pothos plants. Um, and I have a sprout, a couple of uh, sprouts, that, not sprouts, but things that I propagated from the pothos. I want to say like six months or whatever. It is hopping now. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Spring is here and all of a sudden it's like the plants are like, oh, ah, circle of life. So I'm, I'm a happy camper with all of my little plants and I'm looking forward to this vacation and some more time in nature. I'll have more to share with you after I return. Um, a little bit of shop news just to save the date for you um, in that my 2022 holiday boxes are going to go on sale on April 4th. Uh, Monday so stay tuned for that I'll have an email that'll go out next week and uh, it's already written and stuff so it'll just be fired up while I'm on vacation to send it to you and I'll post of course on Instagram too and I'll have more information about that on the next vlog too but I'm very excited to bring those to you and then I'm collaborating on actually a couple of uh, yarn dyers their advent boxes to providing bags for those and those just went on sale so I'll leave links down to them uh, down in the description box Nancy of Trilogy Yarns um, her advent boxes just went on sale and I'm providing a drawstring bag for those and then Nina of Speckled Finch Studios I'm providing a notions bag uh, notions bag for her advent box um, just and all of the details of what are included in those boxes can be found on their website but I'm really thrilled to collaborate with both of those dyers again and good friends as well that's going to do it for this week. It is a shorty, but I got to get packing. I have some meal planning I need to do, a little bit of meal prep to take with me. I am going to see my family for a little bit too at the tail end of the trip, but for the most part, it's just going to be me and a little tiny house that I've rented and lots of reading and yoga and chilling out and just brainstorming and dreaming in a different environment and getting away from the hustle and bustle and I feel really grateful that I'm able to do this so can't wait to report back to you how it all goes I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead that you are able to enjoy some sunshine even if it's in the midst of some snow that I know has fallen as of late in some areas and that you're enjoying the autumn if it is down in if you are down in the southern hemisphere see you all next week